A couple of years ago, our MSP were predominantly in the medical vertical. So we're dealing with doctors and nurses and people who are just busy. And one of the things that we found was they didn't want to put in a ticket. It wasn't even that they wouldn't call, but they just wouldn't put in a ticket. So they wouldn't know about things. Or if they did put in a ticket, it was a bad ticket. So, so we've got on one side of things, we've got people who are grabbing a technician in the hallway or texting them. Maybe they're calling, maybe they're emailing, maybe they email the wrong email address um, to put in a ticket. And so we wouldn't get a ticket. So we wouldn't know what was going on. And then if they, if they even put in a ticket, it would say something like it's slow or I broke it or password lock, you know, locked out of account. And so not enough information. And so our technicians would end up doing a lot of administrative work instead of doing the technical things that we hired them to do, you know, their genius areas, they would be required to call someone back. If they didn't answer the phone, they'd send them an email, they'd stop by their desk. So there's all of this inefficiency that was just kind of like tangled up in the ticket. So what we wanted to do was create the fastest way for customers to put in a ticket straight to our ticketing system. And then we also wanted to make sure that as they put in a ticket, they were able to put in a perfect ticket that gave our technicians all the information that they needed uh, to solve their problem <clears throat> at, as soon as they received the ticket. So, so with that, we created tier two tickets and help us buttons. The way that this works is you have the tier two tickets software that would be installed on all the computers that you manage that uh, you need to have um, put in a ticket. I'm running into a customer's computer right now, and I want. I need help. Something bad happened on my computer and, or just something happened and I want to get your attention. So I can trigger the software by either pressing a physical button, which you can brand with your logo. It's a fantastic sales tool. We'll get on that. We'll get, we'll talk about that a little bit towards the end, but you can also use a hotkey one through F11. You, you can use a desktop icon that can be branded with your logo. And we also add an automatically pinned to taskbar icon. So, you know, your customers have this very clear how to get help in front of their face at all times. So we click this help button and it immediately is going to launch dozens of real-time diagnostic scripts that are going to help us identify what's going on on our computer. And I'm sorry, y'all, I haven't rebooted this computer in a premium month, so it's going to be a little bit slow. But what it does is it immediately, as you saw on that little splash screen, it's going to tell us that we're collecting a bunch of information. And then we don't want our end user to know anything technical or do anything remotely technical. We want to grab their information as quick as possible. We want this to be preferred to phone call, to email, to grabbing a technician in the hallway. So we don't require them to know their email address. We actually pull this from their logged in users' credentials. You can give your customers access to, you know, a website or a user portal, or you can remove this completely, but then we want them to be able to say in plain English what their problem is. Are there any common tickets that you guys have been receiving phone calls over these days? Help. It's slow. <laughs> is that a good one? Yeah, that, that, that's pretty good. <laughs> Help, it's slow. We have a secretary starting Friday. That's another thing that I have to say. The printer is eating paper. So I'll tell you why I'm, you know, being being a little bit silly here, adding adding a, a long a long ticket here. But you know, we want them to say in plain English what their problem is. They don't, you know, they don't need to know anything technical. If that's our job, they are hiring us to take care of, you know, the stuff so they can work in their genius areas. And so on this page, plain English, and then they can also select a few of their preferences on, on, you know, what's, what's going on here. All of these are customizable. So you can change any of these to, to say whatever you'd like out of the box. A lot of our customers leave this as is these two sets of three radio buttons approximate that ITIL priority matrix. So it's really, really useful for just getting, getting a general baseline for what your customer is dealing with. We're not going to talk too much about this, but we do have some really powerful automations that allow the software to, to do one of two things. You can actually triage tickets. So you can say, you know, if they select all job functions are impacted and this affects everyone here, then escalate that ticket to a high priority ticket. You can actually listen for the email address that comes in with the person. You can assign it to a specific technician or queue or type or subtype. So there's a ton that you can do. We actually have an AI that's able to read for context and sentiment, but knows exactly what's going on and can categorize. And the other thing that we can do that you're actually seeing here is we do have a 
assist actions that will give the customer dynamic activities based on what they asked for. So our software can give them what they need to do a little bit of self-service activity or to get more information for you without your technician having to call them back. We can, they can redact the screenshots or the diagnostic data if they need to. This is a, you know, EPHI privacy concern. We want to make sure that there's affirmative consent for submitting this information. Again, this text is customizable for you. And then what we're doing right now is we are looking at this email address and we're going to put the ticket in as that customer that's associated with that email address. And we're going to see a couple of things here. We've got our assist actions that just fired off here. Because they said it's slow, we're offering a reboot script so we can literally reboot their computer. They hit go. We've got, you know, they mentioned a printer. So we have a knowledge base article, how to throw your printer out the window. We also have an integration with Google Forms and Cognito Forms. So if they ask for a, you know, a specific topic that requires additional information, like an onboarding or an offboarding, you can actually create a form that passes the form information to the ticket that you received. So a ton of things here that really help with the customer experience. The ticket has been submitted. This ticket number is pulled. My demo today is actually managed, y'all, but this, this would pull a, you know, an auto task looking number. And then we also have automatic toast notifications on ticket status change. So nose to tail, we're giving our customers a really, really easy way to put in a ticket. We're walking them through instead of having to ask them for more information that they may not know the answer to, we can get exactly what, you know, what they intend to say and actually give them opportunities to give us more information without there being back and forth. And then, you know, when the tickets close, they can actually get a little toast notification or as, you know, as the status changes, if someone puts a comment on it, they can actually get that, you know, a little, a little feedback instead of having to live in their email. So that is the user flow here. So from a technician's standpoint, we want them to receive tickets in the ticketing system. We want them to receive and work tickets the same way they always do, leaving their notes, leaving their time you know, follow up, et cetera, in the same place. And so we put this ticket in as the customer associated with the email address that was used at the beginning of that, of that submission process. And so um, any SLAs that are associated with that customer that you already have, you know, workflows that you already have built out, will follow those first. And then as you see here, as our discussion note, we've got name, host name, logged in user, the message and selection that they made. And then the real sauce, the real magic here is in the internal notes. So your customer doesn't see these. This is just for your technicians. We've got the information that came from that form, the Google form that we had in the ticket itself. And then we've got our report and our remote access tool that we've built available here. And the report is real cool. As you can see here, we've already, we've got a bunch of things that are red and, and yellow and green. There's some green. But this, this report is, is really the heart of our product. We're getting real-time information at the point of the customer's request. So at the point that they're saying something's wrong. So if they put in a ticket at 6.30 PM when all of your technicians have left for the day, they don't have to go back through log files and dig out what was happening at the point in time that the ticket came in. You can actually see in real time what was going on. I'm just going to scroll down here so you can actually see the volume of information. So we've gathered all this information from that device, network, software, hardware. We're going to pre-flag things that look out of spec. They're good. I told you guys that I hadn't rebooted the computer in a while. That's very true. Unlike a, unlike a customer who would tell you, yeah, I rebooted it and they really just closed their, you know, close the laptop. So we'll, uh, we'll give you the logic behind why we highlighted something. So you can see here, we've got our real-time software processes where we're highlighting everything that's problematic. Event viewer and application for system and application, you actually see we've got links throughout this report. So we're going to actually give your technicians high-ranking, reputable sites that are going to return a symptom cause of workaround or even a solution for a specific item. So ton of ton of things here recent blue screens of death. I'm not going to belabor all of these things, but essentially the, the point here is that with the press of a button, your customer is going to give your technician everything they need to solve their problem quickly. A lot of customers that we've seen, we have had a lot of feedback where customers are thrilled to not feel stupid anymore. And that as someone who does UX and customer interactions, that's huge to me because 
our job isn't to make them feel like they're less than our technical team, but rather that we're partners with them. And so for them to feel like pressing a button gives them the agency to help them solve their problem faster. And then at the same time is improving communication because they're not going to have to feel like they have to explain something or you know, not understand the terminology or even remember what they, was, they were doing. So this, this report gives your technician context and clarity around the situation at hand of what is going on with the customer's device. And if that's not enough, we actually have an instant replay. We go back in time, 20 actions leading up to their problem. And we give you an instant replay of exactly what was going on. Before we got on this call, I'm feeling a little bit under the weather. got a little tickle in my throat. I was like, what's the best chicken soup? So you can actually see here as I'm scrolling through these pictures, you can see what I click on. It's going to be highlighted in green. When I close out something, it's highlighted in green. We write it across the bottom. What, what that customer was doing at that given point in time. I went to the help this buttons website. You can download a given frame. So, you know, when you see them closing out of that application, you can say, Hey, we saw you, you know, we downloaded that frame. We saw this is what you did, or you can download the entire slideshow and send it off to a third-party vendor who won't look at a problem until you replicated it. And last, uh, these images are stored compressed in memory. We don't submit them or write them to disk or anything that allows for speed Our you know, our software is very lightweight. And then also it's a security approach as well. We're not going to send that information off without a customer knowing about it. So, so yeah, that's the report. If that's not enough information for your team, you can actually add information or have uploads associated with this as well. So really, really good context and clarity on what's going on. We've got a report summary. So you've got everything that we flagged in the report highlighted and bubbled up to the top here. So your technicians have a good starting place for what the problem even is. And when they call the customer back, they can even have, they can have a resolution or they can even talk through that resolution with another technician. So you have, you know, the conversation is no longer, okay, Mrs. Smith, let's see what we can do for you. It's Mrs. Smith, we already took a look at your computer. We already have several plans of attack, and this is what we're going to do to take care of you. And it just kind of changes. Not only does it put your technicians in a good light, as someone who worked to help us before, I would have loved to have this moment of sanity and clarity <laughs> before answering a customer question. So. I really love that aspect of this, but this report is really the key part of this process, getting this report into your technician's hands, but, you know, getting it, giving your customers that really good interaction is, is definitely the, the baseline for it. So pretty useful for identifying what's going on and giving your technicians what they need to get started. We also have the ability to pull this report on demand. I love the the question about, you know, can we reduce number of calls? And I actually was working with a partner who is about 350 endpoints and they were using a call center for, for, you know, receiving tickets. And in the first three months of using tier two tickets, they averaged a savings of $400 a month by re a reduction of call center costs. So they, you know, they, they whole hog were using tier two tickets for submitting their tickets. But it, you know, one of the things about submitting tickets over the phone is often you've got a technician that's getting tied up doing that phone work. They're having to go through and remote into the customer's computer and you know, figure that stuff out while they're on the phone. And so one of the things that we have actually added as a feature is the ability to pull this report on demand. So our technician who's answering the phone can say, hey, just a second, let me take a look at at your computer and we can create a ticket here. We can put the customer's email address. So we can pull this report while we're sitting there and getting more information from the customer about what their problem is. And we can actually see exactly what we just saw from the customer putting in their, their problem in real time at the point that they've, they've called in. So that helps, you know, it helps a dispatcher identify what's going on. You know, they can kind of say, oh, well, this is a printer problem. I'm going to sign this to our printer guy or something like that. But so you can pull this report and see exactly what's going on uh, on demand. So some really cool ways to be able to see what's going on. The last thing is uh, this all is great, but what if the computer it can't connect to the internet? We actually have a fantastic way. And an answer to that is at the end of the form submission process, we'll actually take all their information. And if we can't connect back to our service, we compress it into a QR code. So all the things that they typed up, their name, their email, the selections that they made. 
We'll compress it into a QR code. They scan it with a native camera app on their Android or iOS device, and it'll submit a ticket to your ticketing system with that information and 10 network diagnostic tests. So instead of having to call your customer and walk them through command line prompts over the phone, you can get a feel for exactly what's going on before having to send someone on site to physically, you know, plug a cable in. We're really proud of it to kind of cut through the noise because so often customers don't want to look stupid. They just don't know the answers to these things. And so to be able to kind of work around that and connect the technician directly with the problem with the computer itself is, is really our goal. So, so I, I know I just threw a whole bunch at you guys, but really that is the heart of our product is a really, really easy way for customers to put in tickets so that you get, you get real-time data based exactly on what was happening at that point in time. So your technicians can hit the ground running, solve the technical problems, be superheroes and, you know, make your, make your end users really happy with their service in general.